Hey guys, it's Mike here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews, which I'm going to be reviewing Dragon Ball Super Episode 42, and then giving my predictions for what's going to happen in Episode 43. Well, a lot of stuff happened on the newest edition of Dragon Ball Super, and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, this week's edition of Dragon Ball Super basically started the same way that they tend to start, as we left off essentially where we left off with the last episode. We get a recap of basically what we saw happen in the last episode. As the Omni King came, they summoned the Super Shenron, made the wish to restore Universe 6's Earth, and then made their way back to their own Earth on Universe 7 happy and home. We basically start the next episode by seeing Beerus and Whis over on their planet as Bulma is contacting them, and Bulma is telling them that she is going to be throwing a party for the celebration for Earth defeating Universe 6 at the tournament. And thus they're going to be throwing a celebration on the Earth, and she's inviting both Beerus and Whis to attend as well as Manaka. Beerus says that they're going to attend, but he's not going to tell Manaka because he doesn't want the secret to be found out, and for Manaka to be revealed as weak to Goku because he wants to motivate him. And basically, we see this party once again. It's very kind of reminiscent of what they did in the Battle of Gods movie, where they're actually having a party at Capsule Corp instead of, you know, in Super, where they decide to have one on a boat for some reason. Bulma and Vegeta are speaking. They're basically talking about how they invited Beerus and Whis to come to the party, and Vegeta basically says that he hopes that there won't be another issue like there was last time, causing Beerus to blow up and destroy the Earth. But with the food that they prepared for Boo, it seemed like it's going to be okay, and he's not going to get in anyone's way this time. They learn from their mistakes. And with that, apparently they ordered a lot of food from this intergalactic delivery service, which Jocko goes over to meet. But shockingly, we find out once it lands that the driver and the one who's actually the delivery man in this case is Manaka. And it's really funny as everyone's shocked and they see that Manaka is actually the delivery driver and he says that basically it's his day job. And it's funny that Chi Chi is actually happy by this because of the fact that she says that he's so powerful and he even has a full time job, which she's always wanting for Goku. And it's also funny when we think about it that Manaka is essentially an intergalactic pizza delivery boy for a living. It seems like he would probably believe long in something like Futurama, and someone even made a picture about that, showing him with the cast of Futurama, and he fit right in, which was pretty strange and pretty funny at the same time, and I guess, you know, maybe that's a crossover that we're gonna get in the future, I really hope so. But we flash over to see that Goku is asleep on the job once again, on his tractor, where he basically, as we know, works as a farmer, you know, for a living when he's not training or fighting, because, you know, Chi Chi is like, you know, hey Goku, we're out of money please provide for us, even though we all have superpowers and could easily just become trillionaires and the most famous people who ever live. Um, hey Goku, why don't you go plow some fields? I'm sure that that's going to help when, you know, evil monsters are going to destroy the entire universe. But as we see, Mr. Satan actually comes over to Manaka, and it's pretty funny because once again, he wants Manaka to become his mascot for his dojo, because he believes, just like the others, that Manaka really defeated Hit and is the most powerful being in the universe. Well, at least behind Beerus and Whis. And as we see, he even brings out someone in a full-size Manaka kind of, you know, foam costume like a mascot would wear, and it's funny because the, the person in the costume takes off the mask and reveals that it's actually pizza, and it's kind of interesting that Manaka basically just delivered this pizza and, you know, this food to the people, and suddenly we bring out pizza who, again, is a filler character from Dragon Ball Z, but they've incorporated her in, you know, the anime adaptation of Dragon Ball Super, so, you know, there's another kind of question of canonicity there, but I don't think anyone really minds that. But then as we see, Goten and Trunks are getting into typical Goten and Trunks hijinks, and they're playing around with a box when they accidentally bump into Manaka, sending him flying and smashing onto a table, seemingly knocked out. And of course, everyone looks on shock because they all thought that Manaka really was the most powerful being in the universe, Universe, and Goten Trunks pretty much knocked him down, and he got back up and started to cry. So, I mean, little children basically knocked this guy in his ass, which people aren't going to be, you know, suspecting at this point that this guy really is as powerful as Beerus said, now are they? But then again, tough men do cry. Tough men do cry too, Manaka. Manly tears were shed. 
And it's funny, Krillin actually looks over at Piccolo and asks him, you know, because he actually knows about Monaka's power, if Monaka truly is as powerful as he was made out to be, and Piccolo basically dodges the question, is what, is he gonna lie to Krillin? But as we see in a blinding flash of light, Beerus and Whis arrive and find out that the jig is basically up, as everyone can see now that Monaka truly is weak, and Bulma basically calls him on it. But at this point, it's explained by Vegeta that he realizes that Beerus is doing it to motivate them, you know, to become even more powerful, and Whis explains that they want Goku to become as powerful as possible because they need to have a good performance at the upcoming Omniversal Tournament. But naturally, Goku arrives when no one was suspecting and runs over to Minaka, greeting him and wanting to spar with him. But Chi-Chi comes over to Goku and yells at him because he's wearing his dirty clothes and sends him away to go put on some clean clothes. So as Goku teleports away, everyone pretty much tries to figure out a way in order to try and make the fight between Goku and Minaka not happen so Goku doesn't find out about Manaka's weakness. But Goku comes back quickly with his fighting clothes on, and Beerus doesn't want him to fight yet, so he tells him to go and do 100 trillion sit-ups. And it's pretty funny because we actually see Goku go over to the side and start doing sit-ups at super speed. But as Beerus is freaking out, trying to figure out a way to stop this fight from happening, Goten and Trunks come up with an idea and come over to Beerus and tell him their idea. So basically that was the first half of this episode, and so far it's pretty obvious that this is more of a slice of life fun episode that's not really tied into any real arc in general. It's mostly just them having fun, and Beerus and everyone is trying to figure out some way to keep this lie under wraps that Minaka truly is the most powerful being after Beerus and before Goku in terms of the power scaling so that Goku will still be more motivated in hijinks and Sue. That's essentially the plot of this episode so far, and I like it because not every single episode needs to be incredibly serious and plot driven. But as we find out, Goten and Trunks' plan is for Beerus to dress up like Manaka in that costume so that he could fight Goku and actually defeat Goku or give him a good fight so that Goku continues to believe this idea. But Beerus believes that it's beneath him as a god of destruction to do that. However, Goku quickly comes over to him at Beerus' shock and says that he finished. Beerus questions how he did this, and Goku states that he simply counted each sit-up as one. Which I guess seems like a totally Goku thing to do. Beerus doesn't believe him, but Goku quickly jumps over, flies over to Naka, grabs him, and starts dragging him away. And as this is happening, Goten and Trunks bring over the costume of Manaka to Beerus. And at this moment, I ended up seeing something that I was pretty shocked to see happen, because this character has been completely useless the entire series, as you know from my video. As Chaozu came into the fold as they decided to actually use him for once and started trying to hold off Goku using his abilities on Goku and holding him in place as Goku continued to try and walk. Now it is kind of strange that Chaozu has this kind of strength to even stop Goku for a fraction of a second. I mean I guess he has been training with Dian Shinhan for a very long time at this point but still it's Chaozu man. But as would happen with Chaozu he's unable to stop Goku because he's completely weak and useless and Krillin runs over and uses the title Ken or solar flare technique blinding Goku temporarily and during that time Minaka is able to get free and by the time Goku's vision returns to him we see that Beerus is now in the suit of Minaka and the two stand off ready to fight Goku looks at him and saying how he basically says that he's even taller than before and larger than before and he's giving off the same strength as Beerus but Goku being Goku assumes that Minaka can simply make himself larger and probably has god key considering he's so strong but as we we see during this Krillin and the real Monaka are hiding behind the Ox King. Now before the two fly off to fight, Bulma talks to Beerus and Beerus says that he's considering just giving up on this whole lie in the first place and not going through with this fight, but Bulma says that Beerus would probably want Goku to be really motivated for the upcoming tournament so that Beerus doesn't look bad in front of the Omni King. Also, Beerus doesn't want the Omni King to find out that Beerus lied about it as it might make him look that much worse. But the two immediately begin fighting as Beerus flies straight at Goku and punches him in the face sending him flying backward. And the two go at one another in a typical DBZ style fashion fight as the two are speed blitzing one another, punching back and forth at super speeds in the air. But as we see, Beerus is having trouble fighting in the Manaka costume and is getting pretty frustrated as a result. Also, as we see as the fight continues to go on, the Manaka costume begins to shred around Beerus, revealing more and more of his body. First, we end up seeing Beerus' fist sticking through the Manaka costume, and then Goku hits Beerus in the head, sending his head literally spinning around and coming on the wrong way. 
but quickly Vegeta and Piccolo rush in the way of Beerus in the Manaka costume in the way of Goku so that they could hide what happened from him, and they quickly make up the idea that Manaka has the power to take over other people and other fighters to use him as puppets. And Piccolo actually extends his arm and grabs Goku, and as Vegeta goes to rush over to attack Goku as if he's controlled by Manaka, Beerus grabs him by the wrist, seemingly not happy with what they're doing, and throws both Vegeta and Piccolo into the distance. He then charges up his power and starts letting it roll, as it seems that Beerus is actually having a lot of fun during this fight, and we see the both of them go back and forth during this contest. Goku gets some punches in on Beerus in the Manaka costume, Beerus gets his own punches in on Goku, and we stands by and watches all of it happen because he knows that Beerus is having fun, and he knows that Beerus has been a spectator for a while during the Universal Tournament that he saw before, so now he actually is going to let off some steam that he felt during that competition. But as we see, as Goku and Manaka charge up their power and rush at one another in one final clash, it ends with a flash of light as Wee steps in the way, stopping both of their fists. He tells both of them that if the fight continues, they will surely destroy the Earth and they need to put an end to it, and thus they do. And then we get a really funny scene afterwards in which Whis points down to the ground to see Beerus who is looking up to see them. However, it's actually a copycat of Beerus, literally, as we see with the strange expressionless face Poir has taken on the guise of Beerus for this fight. It's really funny and it reminds me of this episode of, I believe it was the Batman series, in which Commissioner Gordon believes that he's discovered that Bruce Wayne truly is Batman. Man. However, we end up seeing that Batman, quote-unquote, is on the roof of Wayne Manor, and it ends up being Alfred in the Batman costume. And it's funny that this episode really decided to use a lot of the old-school characters like Poir and Chiaotzu, who really haven't done anything since Dragon Ball, to be perfectly honest, and maybe some of early Z. But as we get down to the ground, another early Z character who has pretty much been useless for a long period of time, named Yamcha, has to open his big mouth and says that their fight was so spectacular that the real Manaka actually passed out. And they call Goku's attention over to the real Manaka, who is now back to his feet, as everyone looks on in shock as they believe that Goku has figured out everything. And Beerus looks on at Yamcha in complete anger inside the costume, looking like he's ready to finally kill Yamcha once and for all, because Yamcha's really been a pain in Beerus' ass for this entire series thus far. But Goku, again being Goku, quickly leans in and says how amazing Manaka's power is, that he has abilities just like Majin Buu, where he could split himself up into multiple bodies if he's so decides. He then celebrates and says he's going to train extra hard because of such an ability and goes off to eat. And finally, Beerus takes off his mask, breathes a sigh of relief, says that he kind of regrets having made the lie up in the first place, and then he and Whis go off to eat their food. And a funny little shot, we even end up seeing that Poir transforms back into his normal form in front of Oolong, completely tired from what he's done. So basically, that was the newest episode, episode 42 of Dragon Ball Super. In general, I really liked it. I thought it was really fun. It was kind of, you know, a slice of life episode, a nice breath of fresh air in many ways, you know, to see all of this fun fun stuff happen, and all these old characters get used again for once in a long time. A lot of the people have talked about for a long period of time, especially with, you know, the issues with Dragon Ball Z, as people have declared, that one of the biggest ones was always that Toriyama just kind of threw away certain characters from Dragon Ball that people really liked, and Dragon Ball Super really seems like they're using them a lot more. So that's definitely something I really enjoyed, and I enjoy, you know, that they're still perpetuating this idea to Goku, you know, Goku being a complete total idiot, that he still believes this all, you know, or is just completely naive that he still assumes that Manaka has all of these powers and truly is powerful, even though he, he feels exactly like Beerus and has just as much strength and has the same aura, and he clearly does not look anything like Manaki. He's just like, oh, well, he's just like Majin Buu. I guess that's Goku being racist again, since he kept calling Frost Frieza after all. And he thought he was evil just because he was Frieza, even though he kind of was. But overall, I really like this episode, and all of this lets me lead into my next episode predictions for episode 43. In episode 43, it seems like we're going to be seeing a lot of Pan. And as Goku ends up saying in the next episode preview, it seems like he's having a really difficult time controlling all of his key, and as a result, he can't really teleport correctly and kind of destroys his house by teleporting into it at the wrong way. So as a result of this, he has to go and live with Gohan for a little while, and he's kind of wondering, how exactly do I babysit Pan? But of course, hijinks ensue as it seems like the Pilaf gang is showing up to kidnap Pan. 
and we even see Pan power up, so it seems like even from an even young age, Pan is still super powerful and ready to annoy all of the fans in Dragon Ball GT. But wait a second, this is super, so Pan is canon, people. Stop telling me she's not canon because she was in GT. This was in- she was in Z, and now she's in Super. Cut it. So essentially what seems like is going to happen is that Goku is going to just go over to Gohan's house for a little while, crash at his son's place, you know, be a crazy grandfather, and we're going to have some even more fun hijinks ensuing in the next episode. And it seems like that's kind of what Dragon Ball Super is trying to do right now, maybe having a little mini arc of fun little slice of life episodes with fun hijinks that ensue before the next coming big tournament that it seems like everything is really building up to. And as we know from what they said in this newest episode, the other gods of destruction are also super powerful and we don't really know just what they would do if they end up beating Goku and Universe 7, so they really need to train as hard as they can for this upcoming tournament. But overall, this has been another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews and Predictions. Did you like this episode? What did you think about it? Let me know down below, and let me know what you're looking forward to and what you predict for the next coming episode of Dragon Ball Super, because I really want to know. Let me know down below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. Subscribe. Ah, do it now. What do you wait Do it for? now, you puny man. Who cares about the universe? Six, five, four, three, two, one. Blah. Blah. I'm from the universe of biceps. Wow.